Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video I'm going to be using Universe Sandbox 2 for an interesting purpose. I've decided to make a multi-series video where I'm going to be recreating the galaxy from interstellar and also talking about various concepts, misconceptions, mistakes and scientific inaccuracies from the movie but also mention the ones that were quite interesting and quite accurate. Now specifically what I wanted to start with is basically visualize the system because in the movie we don't really get the map. We need to see the map, right? We want to know what everything looks like. We want to see, we want to know if there's a sun in the middle. We want to know if there's a uh, something else orbiting the black hole. Now what I did is I uh, searched on the internet and I also uh, looked through the book by Kip Thorne, uh, the physicist who was responsible for basically the scientific part of the movie. Um, and I've decided to essentially try to combine all the parts that I found about the uh, actual system that they were presenting to us in the movie and then try to recreate this in Universe Sandbox 2 because this game is brilliant in allowing us to do that. So without further ado, let's start with the most important part. So what is it at the center of the interstellar um, galaxy that we are showing in the movie? Well, I'm going to create the new, uh, new solar system here and of course in the center we have the black hole. So this game allows us to choose six different black holes. And the ones we're looking at is right here. This is the one that is sort of in the movie to some extent at least. Because this black hole, the biggest one, this is something you find in the center of a galaxy. Now the um, the black hole that we're shown in the movie is not in the center of the galaxy. It's actually I guess you could call it the second tier black hole. It's uh, according to uh, re um, According to Kip, Kip Thorne, it's actually 10 to the power of 6 uh, masses of sun, and this is exactly it. This is 1 million suns. And so, we're going to go ahead and place it right here in the middle. And you can see, if you can, can kind of see the outline of it, it's actually very, 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 very large. Now, this is something that I've mentioned in the video on black holes. Specifically, the fact that black holes are not tiny points in space. I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually... It's sort of bending the light behind it, but it's it's very large. It's a very, very large mass. If you click on it, you'll even see the size of it. Specifically, it says right here, it's, a, it's almost 3 million kilometers in radius. And it uh, it's super cold, of course. It's actually, it's not exactly um, absolute zero. It's approximately, I think it's like several nano Kelvin, uh, basically just above absolute zero. And not, uh, you can't really see anything here, but uh, you can, we can look at the stats. Uh, the numbers here. So it does have density uh, and this is something I've mentioned in the, in the black hole video. Black holes, they do have density. They're not uh, infinite, de infinitely dense, but the larger they are, the uh, less dense they are. So this one is actually a lot less dense than smaller black holes. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to try to work out just using the movie stuff and uh, what I have in his book, work out what this system might look like. So first of all, we know there is a source of light somewhere because the planets had light. Now where is this from? We didn't actually see anything next to the black hole when we were shown the black hole. There was no sun orbiting around it. There was only an accretion disk. Basically the light that we see in the movie, let me just show it to you, maybe I can find it on Google. And this is actually the picture I'm talking about. So this light that you see in the, in the back, this is an accretion disk that is essentially created by um, all kinds of matter orbiting around black hole ridiculously fast, close to speed of light, and essentially getting overheated by friction. So it's not really, it, uh, it's not enough to heat up this object, which is the uh, one of the planets that we do get to ex see in the movie. And that planet is of course Miller's world. Now, um, before I place this Miller's world, I would like to have some sunlight. So there must be something. And what I found out is that there, there is actually some sort of a star orbiting somewhere, somewhere away from the black hole. And specifically, it's a neutron star. It is actually mentioned in the movie that there is a neutron star orbiting around it. So there is a um, there is a neutron star that is available to us and that's already pre-made in the game and I'm going to actually add it. But before I do add it, I would like to explain what neutron stars are. But I'm going to do this by using, let's just look at, let's do Sirius. I'm going to put Sirius right here. Sirius is one of the stars that we can see in the sky and 
Okay, that is a little bit too fast. It's spinning a little bit too fast. But I'm going to actually... I'm going to change the speed of the game to almost almost exactly one second per second. Essentially, normal time. And you can see that it's already orbiting really, really, really fast. It's orbiting really fast around the black hole. And this is a huge distance. This is like... This is... Uh, wait, let's, let's actually look how far this is. This is about 50 million, million kilometers, which is sort of like one-tenth of the distance from Earth to Sun. But the speed that it's moving with is right here. It's almost 100 kilometers per second, which is one-third of the speed of light. Now, this is because of the mass of this black hole. It's actually really, really massive. It's like a million times of our sun. So it's, it has an immense gravity. And you can see it's, it's, it's so dark. It's really, really, really black. Now, it, it would not look like this in real life. It would probably... Um, well, this is actually a pretty awesome simulation of what it might look if, if the sun passes behind the black hole, but it's not exactly accurate. I, I believe the interstellar is actually really good at presenting the black hole in a very realistic manner. But the reason I actually put Sirius here and not the neutron stars is because I wanted to show you how neutron stars are formed. And this is actually important because it, it's very likely this is exactly what happened um, in in the in the universe of the movie, in the Interstellar, because uh, the black hole probably c captured a very very large star that then under has undergone um, a supernova, because that's how the neutron stars are born. It's the stars that are not massive enough, so anywhere um, between like mass of our sun and actually I think it has to be at least 1.5 size size of our sun and maybe under 3.2 masses of sun. So Sirius is one of those stars that will actually become um, a neutron. Oh, uh, and so to become a neutron, it basically has to get really, really old. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to advance its age and you'll see it transforming. You, you see it changing and changing colors and de decreasing in uh, both luminosity and uh, temperature. And eventually, as you can probably guess, it's going to explode. There you go, this is a supernova. Now, interestingly, just watch what happens. Now, there is actually no neutron star in the middle. I'm actually, I should probably just put one here. I'm gonna just put it in here. Where's my neutron star? I forget the name. And there you go, I just added the neutron star right here in the middle just to kind of simulate what this would look like when this occurred. And so this is a neutron star called PSR 1719-1438, and this is an actual star that we know about. And essentially, it's just going to be orbiting around the black hole, just like it, it probably is in a movie. But look at that, look at how awesome this is. This supernova is actually more uh, monodirectional because of the gravity it's actually exploding in one direction and everything else is probably being captured by the black hole into its accretion disk and basically essentially into itself now i'm going to accelerate time just to show you how beautiful this becomes this is actually one of the most gorgeous things i've seen in this game so far because uh, what the first time when it happened i was totally blown away by how awesome and how majestic this this became so to accelerate time just to let my supernova spread and my neutron star keeps orbiting around the black hole and look at that look at how gorgeous this becomes it just spreads into one direction away from the black hole and essentially it's sort of like a, a, br a breath of a dragon or something normally a supernova would be all around the place but here everything is being absorbed by the black hole except for this one little piece that manages to escape its gravitational pull and essentially this escapes into the uh, outer at atmosphere not uh, sorry not atmosphere outer uh, black hole system and there's actually a part here that's even black completely black i've never even seen this before anyway so going back to our neutron star let's actually zoom in on it it's probably orbiting really fast now, so this is probably what happened in the movie. So th this is how the neutron star was born. Um, and essentially, when the supernova occurred, I think um, whatever planets were in the vicinity probably got superheated and possibly had a lot of their um, composition changed as well. But essentially, um, the neutron star probably stayed there. And essentially, this is where the sunlight is coming from. Now, here's the important part about neutron stars. And here's why actually... This is one of the misconceptions slash problems slash, I guess, goofs in the movie. Neutron stars do not live very long. They're very, very short-lived. And specifically, 
we look at this number here. So this neutron star is that the one that we know about is about six million uh, years old. Now I'm going to zoom in on it. Ooh, okay. Oh my God, what what is happening here? I don't even know. I'm going to zoom in on it and um, and I'm going to accelerate time and show you what happens to a neutron star when it gets really old. So, um, or actually, we're not going to do this way. We're going to just accelerate time uh, manually. I'm going to decrease the speed here and show you what happens to it. So, this is six million years. And remember, one of the planets in the movie, uh, Miller's planet, has a time dilation. Essentially, it's when, uh, well, the way they said in the movie, right? One hour on that planet is seven years on Earth. So it's something like 61,000 times faster. Uh, and why is it important? We'll explain it to you in a second. Let me just, I hope this is not too bright, but let me just um, accelerate this. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to increase the age of this planet manually. So this is 8 million years. You, you already see the change of color. Temperature has changed, dropped dramatically. Luminosity has changed. This is 9, almost 10 million years. Uh, the temperature has now decreased to less than 3,000 degrees Kelvin, which is even less than our sun. Uh, but it was really high before. If you go back to 6 million years, if you go back to 6, its temperature currently is almost uh, 6,000 degrees Kelvin, which is essentially just like our sun. Well, anyway, so let's, let's keep going. So this is 10 million years. And now we're going to go to 15 million years. And you can see it gets darker and darker. 20 million years and 30 million years and look at that it's getting darker and darker and darker at about 100 million years it becomes a black dwarf so this is what we call a black dwarf and essentially this is a sun that is kind of not very useful in terms of trying to heat things up it's only about 900 degrees Kelvin it's really dark it has really uh, almost no luminosity and the problem with this is that it's, well, if you were to live on Miller's planet where time dilation, dil dilation is 61,000 um, times, that means that, um, well, let me just do calculations here. Well, really, that means that in about a thousand years, just roughly speaking, a thousand years, uh, the sun will essentially be extinguished. It, it will be, become this. Um, and that's, that's really, that's kind of silly. I mean, why would you want to go to a galaxy or a, I guess it's a galaxy or a system where a sun is about to die anyway. It's going to die in like a thousand years if you live on that Miller planet. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, I don't even know if they were planning to live on Miller's planet, but it was one of the chosen planets, right? This is, there were three planets that they chose. One of them was Miller's planet and two of them were somewhere far away. So anyway, so that was just my one of my thoughts um, that kind of didn't really make sense. If there's a neutron star that's basically powering everything and it's going to essentially die pretty soon, why choose that particular system? Uh, because neutron stars are not very long lived. Uh, you would want to choose a system that has an actual star, not a neutron star. Anyway, so let's move on. Let's actually go back to uh, the beginning and we're going to recreate the first part of this system.